Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing all about the We See Project, one of the coolest hobbyist computers I've seen lately. Not only is it small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, but it's a proper x86 PC fully capable of running MS-DOS and Windows. No emulation or virtualization either, the Wii C is compatible on a hardware level with all sorts of PC games and software. With Sound Blaster support and SXGA 32-bit color graphics paired with an 800MHz processor and 256 megs of RAM. There's even general MIDI support with MPU 401 compatibility for both internal and external sound modules. All running straight off a micro SD card. No hard disks or IDE adapters in sight. Fantastic stuff. At the core of the wee little wee CPC you see is this, the SOM304RD-VI available from iCOP, a system on module built using the ISA bus intended as an embedded system for use in legacy industrial environments. Making this the latest and smallest one of these industrial solutions on LGR to date. Y'all know I'm quite the fan of these things, from single board computers on an ISA backplane to specialized motherboards that pair modern processors with legacy I.O. and expansion buses. The form factor differs, but they're all built with backwards compatibility in mind to extend the life of legacy systems still used by businesses. But they're also a lot of fun as a retro PC enthusiast. The problem is that, while they're often ill-suited to gaming due to their lack of compatible graphics and sound, and that's where the We See Project comes in, which is here courtesy of Andy, an incessant hardware tinkerer behind the YouTube channel The Rasteri. Over the last year or so, he's been experimenting with various industrial modules and turning them into tiny DOS gaming rigs, a pursuit I've been happily watching from afar through his videos. Well, after I left a comment on his first video on the Wii C, he reached out and asked if I'd like one of the newer revisions to mess with an LGR. Something I was more than happy to take him up on, so thanks again, Andy. Because this thing is getting dangerously close to one of my dream devices, a miniature retro PC. Something along the lines of an NES Classic or whatever, but for old school DOS and Windows games, but without emulation. And yeah, the functionality is on point here, and we'll get to that. For now, check out that solid, practical design built to suit the size and features of the SOM304 it's built around. It uses an off-the-shelf metal housing, measuring this much, <laughs> looking a lot like a video scaling device or some other kind of signal converter box. It'd be amazing to have the Wii C in a custom housing, maybe something that looks like a mini IBM PC or some other iconic desktop, but you know, this does the job and it's all kinds of sturdy. The end plates are nice little custom jobs, though, made using PCBs to save on manufacturing costs, but also just because it looks cool. And this is all your I.O., starting with micro USB for power, USB 2.0 and Ethernet ports, VGA output and 3.5mm stereo audio, and on the other side, micro SD for storage, a 15-pin game port for joysticks and MIDI devices, and a PS2 port for keyboards, or both the keyboard and mouse at the same time using a standard PS2 Y adapter. There are no power or disk activity LEDs, unfortunately, nor is there a reset or power button, so you just have to plug and unplug the system to perform a power cycle. I did address that last one by using a micro USB power adapter with a built-in power switch, but yeah, it'd still be nice to have a reset button and some indicator LEDs in a future revision, assuming it's possible to fit them inside this veritable sardine can of cramped components. The thing clamped down in the middle is the iCOP SOM itself, packing the majority of the computery computer stuff. Like the processor, a Vortex 86DX running at 800MHz with 32K combined L1 and 256K L2 cache, which performs kind of like a Pentium 1 clocked at 300MHz. Along with 256 megs of DDR2 RAM on this version of the board, more than enough for late 90s gaming. And the graphics are handled by a 32MB XGI Velari Z9S chipset offering resolutions from low-res CGA all the way up to 1280x1024 in 32-bit color, albeit without 3D acceleration. 
And it's all built around the ISA bus with integrated UDMA 133 IDE, 10100 Ethernet, serial, and parallel support. Although the latter two don't have ports on the WeC, they can be added back by using compatible USB adapters. All this awesomeness is thanks to this right here. The WeC board itself, revision 0.3 in this case. Andy designed this as a custom interface board for the system module, breaking out all the important I.O. into full-sized ports going off to the left and right. It also adds audio capabilities, which is vital since the SOM304 doesn't have any sound options built in. So along the bottom is an evolution of his earlier Wii86 sound setup, which uses the venerable Crystal Semiconductor CS4237B, a popular 90s sound chip with Sound Blaster Pro and AdLib compatibility used on all sorts of sound cards and motherboards back in the day. And on top of that, this version of the WeC now supports Wave Blaster add-ons with a header accepting general MIDI daughter boards, like the itty bitty McFly MIDI synth or Dream Blaster S2 from Serta Shop, the latter of which was included here. The two things that are conspicuous by their absence is any kind of PC speaker or real-time clock battery, meaning the system is silent on startup and time, date, and BIOS settings are lost after each power cycle. Though you can at least get PC speaker sound through the regular audio out by loading a DOS driver, and RTC features can be added by soldering in a 3-volt battery. And finally, we've got the micro SD card, which functions as the system's hard disk. An excellent option compared to IDE adapters and disk on modules I've used before, especially since it's natively supported in the BIOS. There are some awesome compatibility features in here too, like the option to throttle CPU speed using a clock divider, taking it all the way down to 25 megahertz, and you can crank it down even more by disabling the cache. Highly useful stuff for software that runs too quickly or refuses to start at all on a faster system. Right. So, with all that being said, what can you actually do with the Wii C? Well, let's get it hooked up, boot up Windows 98, and test it out with a bunch of classic computer games. No fans, no drives, not even a startup beep. Only silence. It's kind of unnerving. But yeah, it's working as intended, and this particular setup has Windows 98 Second Edition installed on here which is a great option since it supports real MS-DOS mode and larger hard disk partitions, so we can make full use of that microSD card, though the 128GB card Andy included here is admittedly complete overkill for 98, but hey, I'll take it. And at this point, it's just your standard Windows 98 PC. Now that's the beauty of this thing, there's no emulation options to set up or virtual machine variables to choose. The Wii C simply functions like any other late 90s PC because that's effectively what it is. The Vortex 86DX processor inside is roughly equivalent to a Pentium clocked at 300 megahertz, so with its 256 megs of RAM, you could actually run Windows XP on here if you wanted to, though that wouldn't be very practical for most games and software. And besides quickly being able to start up and run DOS things, either in Windows or booted into DOS mode, is half the reason to choose Windows 98 in the first place. That Dream Blaster MIDI module sounds superb, and of course, you also get good old AdLib FM synth support. The CS4237B chip is actually the same one used on the Orpheus sound card and IBM ThinkPads like the 380XD, so yeah, it sounds great for being a clone. Of course, you're somewhat limited in terms of games that use CD audio since, you know, there's no CD-ROM drive. But it's easy to use programs like Demon Tools or SHSU CD for virtual drives in Windows and DOS, respectively. And external drives can be plugged in via USB, from CD-ROMs to zip drives to floppy drives or whatever else. 
just gotta be careful not to overload the power adapter, which is easy to do even with a single floppy drive connected. A powered USB hub gets around this, of course, and chances are you'll want a hub anyway, since there's only a single USB port on the system. This does start to erode the appeal of the Wii C being such a small computer system, but you know, sometimes you want to have your I.O. cake and eat it too. And it's still a lot smaller than a full-sized Windows 98 gaming rig. That being said, it's nowhere near as capable as a big beast either, due to the lack of hardware 3D acceleration. Its graphics chip only does 2D, so you're limited to software rendering only. A bit of a shame since it's got 32 megs of video memory on board, though it does make sense seeing as the SOM was built for industrial applications and not Quake 2. So it won't have all the bells and whistles, but it'll still run. Usually. <laughs> some games refuse to run at all, like Need for Speed 3 for some reason. Even in software mode, it just crashes to desktop even when patched. But Need for Speed 2 SE runs perfectly fine, right out of the box. Or at least as fine as it gets using the software renderer on this particular setup. Really the sweet spot for Windows games here tends to be from 1995 to 1997 or so, verging into certain games from 98. So Tomb Raider 2, Age of Kings, Diablo, Jazz Jackrabbit 2, Fallout, Descent, Civilization 2, Command and Conquer, yeah. There's a lot of good stuff to indulge in here, as long as you don't swerve too far into territory of games optimized for 3D accelerators. On that note, a lot of games have no idea what to make of the CPU, so it's common to get a message saying the system isn't compatible. This is something you also saw back in the day if you were running a CPU from Cyrix or NextGen, so it's fine. Typically, you can skip the warning, install it anyway, and try your luck with software mode. It might take a while to load, though, since the read-write on that microSD card is mighty slow indeed, making install times and initial loading of games significantly longer than a traditional hard disk. It's not bad once it's loaded into memory, and there's a whole lot of memory to spare, thankfully. It's just slower than I'm used to, even compared to other flash memory solutions I've used. Eh, it's fine, though, since where the Wii C really shines is with DOS gaming, no huge loading times or 3D acceleration required. All my personal favorites run, look, and sound fantastic on the Wii C. Doom, Duke Nukem 3D, Jazz Jackrabbit, Epic Pinball, Tyrion, SimCity 2000, even Quake turns in a respectable performance. And in many ways, I prefer the look of 2D software rendering with that one anyway, so yeah, all good stuff in my view. Although games like Crystal Caves and Commander Keen do suffer a bit from the lack of a real PC speaker, requiring a driver being loaded in DOS to output beeps through the regular speakers. Not a deal breaker by any means, but having the option for a real speaker would be nice, either through a 4-pin header or a piezo beeper being crammed inside somewhere. Yeah, th this is simply one of those projects that I enjoy so much that I can't help but want just a little bit more, you know? Like, it's great having Ethernet for multiplayer games and file transfers and whatnot, but at the same time, I'd enjoy having onboard Serial 2, since I personally use that far more often, for various devices. And how cool would it be to have some kind of floppy drive emulator built in, so you could load virtual disks without fiddling around with files so much? Plus, there's the stuff I wished for already, like a reset and power button, activity LEDs, and a true PC speaker. All of this would make for a slightly larger system, but speaking for myself, I wouldn't mind a couple extra inches if it made things that much more useful. Well, anyway, that's the Wii C. It's such a neat little system that I've been having a lot of fun with, and man, I wish I could tell y'all where to buy one. Unfortunately, it's only a hobby project right now, and Andy doesn't have any plans on selling them himself. And he has made the design schematics available for free, so if you have the skills and the components, you can plop it together for a total cost of around 250 pounds or 350 US dollars currently. So it ain't cheap for the performance you get, as a much more capable Windows 98 PC can still be built for that price. And the labor involved in hand-making the Wii C, uh, yeah, that can't be ignored. But still, that tiny form factor and excellent compatibility with DOS and Windows really is appealing. So I hope that someone takes up the torch and starts selling them as kits or complete systems, because I think there's a market for it. Either way, though, the Wii C shows that this style of tiny DOS and Windows PC is possible, 
and I love the fact that it exists at all. And if you dug what you just watched, then do check out my previous videos on computery things, or stick around for new videos on all kinds of retro topics here on LGR. And of course, thank you for watching.